I'm Dr. Melanie Windridge, a physicist and mountaineer. I'm climbing Everest and I want to highlight the science that gets us to the summit. On any mountain, even small ones in the UK, it's imperative to have the right clothing to protect us from the elements. I'm at the University of Southampton to speak to chemist Stephanie Chapman about the science of outdoor clothing. I want to find out about the innovations that keep us more comfortable in the mountains. Hi Stephanie. Hi Melanie. I've brought some clothes from my Everest expedition and I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about the chemistry that goes into keeping us warm on the mountains. Sure. First of all we've got uh, a base layer. Why is the base layer important? So the base layer is really important in moderating your body temperature. The material is designed to help the movement of water from your skin out into the environment and this minimises conductive heat losses. So this is going to keep us warm? Yes, that's, that's it. So most people will know this is wicking. So you can see the wicking effect also when you absorb water using kitchen paper. So when I place the paper towel over the droplet, you can see how the liquid both is drawn up from the underside of the paper to the top, but it also spreads out, which increases the surface area over which evaporation can occur. Okay, so that's keeping us warmer by ensuring that our base layer is not yeah. wet. Wicking. This is the movement of liquid by capillary action. And you can see something similar when you place a narrow glass tube into a small beaker of water. And you can see how the level of the liquid in the tube rises above the level in the beaker. So what's happening there? So this is all to do with a balance of cohesive and adhesive forces. So water molecules in the liquid, they like to stick together. And that's uh, cohesion. So that's what causes uh, the formation of water droplets, for example if you were to add water to oil. There's a strong cohesive force acting between the water molecules but the adhesive interaction with the oil is much weaker so the water molecules like to stick together and form droplets. The opposite is true in the case of the glass tube, so there the adhesive force between the water and the glass is much stronger so the water likes to adhere to the sides of the tube and that's what causes the water to rise up. So it's like creeping it's up It's creeping the tube. up. So something similar is happening here with your fabric. So going from your skin and then out into the environment and evaporating. And what about microfibers? Why do they talk about microfibers? So microfibers just mean that your material is made up of lots of much smaller fibers. And what this does is it increases the surface area that's available for these adhesive interactions with the water molecules. So what that means is that this process of moving the moisture from your skin to the environment can happen much more quickly. Okay, so little tubes are better than big tubes. Yes, absolutely. So if you compare, for example, a, the larger diameter tube with the smaller diameter tube, you can see how the liquid moves much higher up the narrower tube, and that's because there's a larger surface area for the water to effectively stick to the glass. Okay, so capillary action is meaning that the sweat doesn't stay on our bodies and it can easily get, get away yes, absolutely. out to the outdoors. Yeah. Okay, so we've had a look at the base layers, yeah. but then we've also got an outer layer, which is a, a hard shell. This is a Gore-Tex, so waterproof. But what's important about these is that they always say that they're waterproof and breathable. Yeah. So what does that mean? That really is key because you've designed this base layer that's really efficient at removing moisture from your skin, but what you don't want to do is then trap that moisture within the layers of your clothing because that's uncomfortable and it increases conductive heat losses. Other issue that you could probably see then is that you've got to get the moisture out, but the last thing you want to do is then let moisture from the environment back into your jacket. Uh, so the solution to this is to incorporate a Gore-Tex membrane amongst the layers of your outerwear. And this Gore-Tex is just stretched PTFE or Teflon, which is the same material that you find on non-stick coatings on your frying pan. Um, but it's been stretched so it has a microporous structure, which means it has lots of tiny holes in it. So these holes, they really are small. We're talking about the fif a 50th of the diameter of the human hair. Okay, so they're really tiny. Really <laughs> tiny. And that means you can fit about 9 billion of them just in a square inch of your fabric there. Water molecules, like to t like, they like to stick together, lots of cohesive interactions. And this is particularly true on the cool exterior of your jacket. So on the cool exterior of your jacket and with the hydrophobic coating that it's got, what you find is that water molecules, which are very small, tend to aggregate together. And this forms much larger droplets. So if this netting here is your Gore-Tex membrane, the large droplets on the outside of the jacket can't get through. But inside your jacket where it's warm, the water tends to stay as single molecules of water in a vapour. And these can easily escape through the Gore-Tex membrane pores. So what that means is that water vapour can escape from the jacket, but those large droplets on the outside can't get in. So that's how you create an outerwear garment that's breathable, but still remains waterproof. If you're really cold, then we have down. I'm wearing my down suit, as you can see. 
down, it's just feathers. Tiny, tiny feathers. And the feathers, they keep us warm because lots of air can be trapped yep. within, within the feathers. However, That's one really problem cute. is that if they get wet, then they just all clump up yep. and you, you lose, lose all that insulation. All the benefits, yeah, of having the down. People have been making something which they call hydrophobic coatings for the down. Can you tell us a bit more about those and what they do? Yeah, sure. So the hydrophobic coating that they use, is just a chemical finish. And what that does is it encourages the formation of water droplets on the down. So this means that there's really weak adhesive interactions between the water and the down. So that the more water molecules form spherical droplets that just roll off the down rather than spreading out and actually wetting the surface, which causes the feathers then to clump together and you lose all the benefits of having nice air, an nice insulating air, layer of air around the down. So what does hydrophobic mean? Essentially means that it, it's repelling the water away from the surface. So if the water is being repelled from the surface, it encourages also the water to stick together. So there's a nice hydrophilic interaction between water molecules and hydrophobic interaction between the water and the surface, and that encourages droplet formation. So even though you shouldn't really wear your down jacket in a rainstorm, if it does get a bit damp, it should still keep you warm. Yes, absolutely, with these uh, chemical finishes that have been applied, yeah. Why does down keep us warm? So the idea with down is that you, I mean, you're really exploiting what nature's done best, um, and it's all about trapping an insulating layer of air. So the air, mo the molecules in air are quite separated, they're separated quite far apart. So this means that it doesn't conduct heat as easily. So that means that if you're warm on the inside and it's cold on the outside, if you've got direct contact between two materials, you get conductive heat losses. So that makes the transfer of heat from your body to the outside much quicker. Whereas if you trap air, because the particles are much further apart, this process takes much longer. It's much less efficient. So it, it means that you stay warmer. How important do you think uh, having the right clothing is to enabling us to do something like climb Everest? Well, it's immensely important having the right clothing. So you're going to be really up against the elements when you're up in the mountains. There's a range of conditions, so it's going to be cold, it's probably going to be damp. You want to make sure that you stay comfortable, because also from a psychological perspective, you need to be comfortable. It's already enough that you've got to scale this mountain. You don't want to then be feeling damp, for example, or cold. Um, all these little things can really help you make progress. On the mountain, the base layer, Gore-Tex and down were all essential pieces of kit. I wore a wicking base layer and a fleece mid layer with a windproof Gore-Tex outer layer up until camp two. Higher up, I swapped my Gore-Tex for down for increased insulation. Everest is a place of extremes and that goes for temperature too. At night or in the shade, the temperature could be as low as minus 20 or even minus 30 at the top. But when the sun's out, the snow and ice reflect the light and it can feel very hot whilst walking. It's hot already, 6am, sun's not even properly up and it's hot. But it's better to be warm. I was lucky that on summit night, whilst walking in the dark, I never had cold fingers or toes, so no chance of frostbite. My protective clothing did its job. Science has had a big impact on the performance of outdoor clothing. Fabrics are engineered by altering the design, the construction and the chemical coatings. To survive in the mountains, you need to keep warm, but you also need to move efficiently and not get too hot and sweaty whilst active. The right clothing can make a difference to how we perform in the mountains.